Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Life Point. And guess what? It's Christmas. We love to say Merry Christmas and thank you so much for joining us today. We just want to lift the name of Jesus up and remember that Jesus is the real reason for the season. So come, let us adore him. Sing with us if you will, join to the world. Of his love, 
You know what I love the most about Christmas is that it's a constant reminder that God is with us. In Matthew, the first chapter, it says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they should call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. You know, that literally means that God's with us in every situation, every circumstance, through the good times as well as the not so good times, through the pain, through the unemployment, through the divorce, the bankruptcy, the poverty, the illness, the surgery, the hurt, the cancer. Whatever it may be that we go through, God's with us. You know, it amazes me how even David understood this when he penned in Psalms 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Even in that valley, I will not fear because God is with us. You see, it's important for us to understand the power of God being with us. You know, one of the things that I love is that I don't think we testify enough of times and seasons in our life where God was with us. You know, it's amazing. Revelation says that they overcame by the blood of the Lamb. I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all unrighteousness and the word of their testimony. You see, sometimes we don't share testimony, and in the midst of us not sharing testimony, we don't realize that our testimony can help somebody else in the middle of their test. And so it's important for us to understand that we are to always give God an opportunity. So Emmanuel means three things. It means that God is in us. It means that God is for us, and it literally means that God is with us. You know, Eli, it reminds me of when we first got married. Um, I got really sick, and I went to several different doctors here in town and could not get any results. As a matter of fact, then I started dealing with other issues like depression and um, just terrible thoughts to a point where, because I couldn't, I couldn't find any answers. And the Lord led us through a friend of ours to a doctor in Birmingham. And within a month, I was drastically different. But just to look back on the time that God was absolutely with us, even in the tragic moments, what seemed, what so, what seemed was like so tragic for us, God was very much there. You know, it's amazing, honey. Um, I remember back when you were pregnant with our middle child. You had just transitioned to a new position with another company and we were you got pregnant right in the gap so we were without insurance and i remember going to the hospital and, and, and negotiating a price for for him to be delivered and um and i saw that they had a little um card that said we financed and i said oh you financed they said well we don't finance at that price and so i said okay let us go home and we'll talk about it and in the process of us talking about it, it was a time in our, our life to where we didn't have a lot of resources. And for us to be able to pay for a child out of pocket to be born, hospital bills, doctor's bills, it was just so insurmountable. And I'll never forget going to work one day and sitting down with the owner, who I would do this frequently, have a cup of coffee afterwards with him. He turned to me and he said, I heard that you don't have insurance for the birth of your child. And I, I turned and said, no, we don't. He said, God has spoken to me and we are to write you a check. And he pulled his checkbook out of his drawer, wrote a full check, and handed it to me for our child to be born. You see, there's so many times inside of our lives that God shows up in a big way. And we've got to recognize that he is Emmanuel. He's the God that's with us. He's the God that's in us. And he definitely is for us. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, his name is called Emmanuel, God with us, revealed in us, his name God showed up in a mighty way on Christmas morning to comfort us because, was it 2003 I think, baby? On Christmas morning, my father passed away of a massive heart attack. And had it not been for, for God being with us, 
holding our hands and wiping our tears and comforting us. I don't know where we'd be. I honestly don't know where we would be. God with us revealed in us his name. Johnny, I didn't know that about your dad. That's an awesome testimony that God was with you that way. Teresa, what's that remind you of? I remember years ago we were going through a really hard time. It was one of those times where you felt like you'd been socked in the stomach <laughs> and you couldn't quite get your breath. That's the way it felt. And um, I remember I had five kids, or we did, so we, we were doing lots of things, but I don't know how we did them. <laughs> but... Um, I remember that during, throughout the day that I would start to pray, but the only words I had was, oh God. <laughs> that was the only thing that would come out every time I began to pray. But when I would begin to pray, it didn't matter that I didn't have elegant words. It didn't matter that I didn't really have any words because he would just flood in by his spirit and he'd give me strength and he'd give me courage and he would give us grace to stand through that time um, and he was always there. And even though all I could say was, oh, God, he knew exactly what I was asking because he knew me and he loved me. And it, and it just didn't matter that there weren't any words, that there really wasn't any prayer to pray because he knew what was in our heart and he knew what we needed and, and he made a way for us. And, and that's the time that I remember that when I couldn't carry myself, that he carried me. So if you find yourself in that kind of situation where you can't carry yourself and you can't even express what's in your heart, just know that he already knows what's in your heart because he loves you and he knows you and that he will carry you through those places. I remember what she's talking about. and You know, God is with us in tough times and in good times. And I remember a time when we were expecting our fourth child, and we were excited. God had told us to have a home birth, and, and we were being obedient to do that, and it was an exciting time. And I won't go into all the details, but I can tell you that th that night at our house when Teresa began to deliver, she delivered a very sweet, peaceful daughter that God had told us that we were going to have. And it was like, wow, this was awesome. This was the sweetest delivery you had ever had. It was really just an awesome time in the presence of the Lord. And then after that, there was another baby that we didn't know about. And God was with that baby too. We just didn't know about it. But that baby, we learned we had that second baby when um, he began to come feet first. And here we were, God, we need you. We're dependent on you because I've never delivered a baby of any kind except the one a few minutes earlier. And then now we have one that's born, being born breech. But you know, God was with us. And I don't know what he did, but he got in my hands. And, and the doctors told me later, when we, a week or so later when I talked to them, they said, you did exactly what you should have done, exactly what I would have done if I had been there. So God was with us. He got in my hands. And after that, because he was born breech, he didn't breathe right away very well. He didn't cry at all right away. And we began to pray, and we were praying. You remember, it was like warfare in our bedroom. It was mighty, and it was powerful, and God was there. You could feel his presence there. And God was faithful to us through a prophetic word. We were praying over this baby that hadn't really cried out yet. And a lady that was there with us, she said, the Lord just told me that you need to call this baby by name. You see, we had already picked a name for our daughter because we felt like we were having a, a girl. We didn't even pick a name for a boy. But the Lord said, you need to pick a name for a boy. You need to call him to life by his name. 
And I remember I looked at Teresa, and she just looked. We kind of knew. She said, well, I was just praying. God, you breathe breath into the first Adam. So I'm asking you to breathe breath into my baby. And so in that moment in time, we named him Adam. And as soon as we began to call him forth by name, just like the word said, he began to cry. And he began to, to breathe deeply <laughs> as he cried. And there was a lot of miracles that happened that night. I won't go through them all. But I can tell you that God was with us through times that we weren't sure that Teresa was going to make it. But again, through a prophetic word that she'd been given just a month or two earlier, I was calling her to consciousness, and, and um, as she began to, to come to wake, she said, get the word. And I got the word, and I declared it over her, and God is faithful to his word. As I just tell you today, God is faithful. He's with you when you expect him to be, and he's with you when you don't see him, but he is with you always. And he will give you exactly what you need when you need it, just depend on him. So God is faithful, and he is always with you, no matter what your situation, no matter whether it's a good time, a time of celebration, or it's a time of troubles, God is always with us. You know, when I think about all the times that God has made a way, it really blesses me. I think back to a time when Wendy and I were freshly married. We had um, two, basically, babies. Um, we had decided to go ahead and have kids early, and, well, actually, God decided one of them for us, and <laughs> he decided both of them, but... <laughs> Anyway, so um, we didn't know, we didn't have a clue what we were doing in life. And we, I had transitioned jobs. And so in transitioning jobs, I went a month without a paycheck. And um, no one's really talked about finances, so I thought I would. Um, so I'm glad no one else talked about finances, but I feel like. There's a lot of people in the place we were in today. Um, <clears throat> so, anyway, we we were just bogged down. I mean, that month dynamically changed. I mean, it, it, it was like a just waves, you know. I mean, even though it was a month without salary, it was like just waves upon waves of debt over the next course of the months. And... Thank God my wife, she does all the finances. Um, I have no clue, you know. I mean, I could have one red penny to my name and I could be a millionaire right now, but honestly, I don't know. And I love it that way. Um, anyway, she, uh, I'll never forget it. Um, I came home from work and um, just got blessed with an awesome job and uh, that we had been praying about. God made a way through that. I mean, he... He orchestrated everything so that I could find favor and get that job. And Anyway, I was kind of on cloud nine. Well, I'll never forget it. She ordered pizza that night, and we were sitting there eating pizza. And she just busts out crying. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? I'm like, you know me? Or, you know, is she fixing to tell me she's having an affair? What's going on? Yeah, I don't know what to think. I was just that clueless. And she began to share with me how negative we were in our finances and I mean it was just like you know I, I, I look back at it and I think you know the things that that I dealt with and we dealt with through that would have crushed most couples really it would have I am not building it up to be something that it's not it really would have just separated and severed um, couples but 
our faith. I mean, our faith, you know, we had always faithfully tithed, even in those seasons. Um, I mean, at that time, we might have been tithing on the Visa card, but we were tithing, you know. And we were believing God. And I'm just telling you, without going into a whole bunch of bogged down detail, the story is, the great part of the story is, through just different channels, I found favor. I found favor at the bank. I found favor with the um, the guy that gave us a, I mean, he took a risk. He gave us a major loan that most people would have just said, get out of my office, you know, in a very, what seemed like an eternity, but looking back, it was a short season of our life. We paid all of our debt. I mean, we were debt free with all of that, that hangover debt and negativity, and it was only because he made a way when my back was against the wall and it looked as if it was over oh he made a way yeah. and I'm standing here only because he made I said I'm standing here only because he made I know that I'm standing here only because he made a way you know Josh I'm so glad to hear that I'm not the only one who doesn't know what the finances are my wife also handles the finances in the family and uh, helps me to know what that is and I thank God for you and I thank God for the way that he brought us together you know I was just remember in 1997 when we met but in 1996 on Christmas Eve I took a long walk I had just become a believer a year and a half before that and I was going to go to a place called Emmanuel Emmanuel College and I was scared I was feeling really fearful, and I remember looking up and seeing this bright star and realizing, you know something? God is with me right now. And after going there, we met, and I thank God for that. And over the years, he's given us wonderful Christmases. We've been through so much. And I want to share something with you, that God is with you. He's with you in this moment. We realize this year how much... God is with us. You see, last Christmas, we did a wedding. It was a special wedding, a Christmas time wedding, a Christmas Eve wedding. It was for my mother and my stepfather, renewal ceremony. And as we were going through the renewal ceremony, I realized the condition that my stepfather was in. I realized how bad things had gotten with his dementia and how much he was struggling. And we began to pray. See, we were pastoring a church in Virginia and very happy to live the rest of our lives there and just loving it. But we heard the voice of the Lord, the instructions of the Lord. A huge part of it, you know, was uh, Pastor Eli <laughs> sitting down and helping us to navigate and pray and letting us know God is with us. And whatever choice is made and we prayed and we were given instructions and I think that what we need to realize is when God is with you he's instructing you and because of that he brought us near here I'm so glad that he has trust the Lord this Christmas because he is with you and he's holding you he's instructing you and he's whispering in your ear and touching you in your heart right now if you'll just receive that so we're thankful, aren't we, honey, for what the Lord has done.
would save our sons and daughters. Did you know your Lord has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. And Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know your baby boy would calm a storm with his hand? Did you When you kiss your little baby, you've kissed the face of God. Oh, Mary, did you know? I, uh, I can remember the time when my wife and I were missionaries in Brazil and um, just happened to be Christmas time and we had our two little ones and we were just wondering, okay, how are we going to celebrate Christmas? And my wife came up with a great idea and I really want her to share that. Amen. Um we were just in a transition time where we had moved from one base to another base. And we were living in just a little apartment that they had provided for us. And we're in a place called Santarém. It's in the Amazon region of Brazil. And we had not a whole lot of money, but that's not the point. The point was we wanted to celebrate Christmas. Mike grew up with great Christmases. I grew up with great Christmases, and we want our children to celebrate. And if you live in a place like in the Amazon, you realize it's not about what you have or how much money you have. It's about who you're with. It's like who you're celebrating with and what, we're cel what we are celebrating. That's the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so the kids, you know, there's no trees in the middle of the Amazon, not Christmas trees, and there's no fake trees to buy. So we took green cardboard paper and we cut out a Christmas tree and taped it to the wall and made little ornaments out of uh, paper and taped it to the wall as well and then just had simple presents. I mean, the kids, we watch old videos now of the kids back then in Brazil and they were getting all excited about these little pocket calculators that cost like 99 cents and, and uh, pencils and stuff because to them it was just, we were rich compared to the people who lived next to us. We barely had anything, and we were wealthy. But the whole point of that story is that it's not about what you can or cannot afford. Anybody here is wondering, you know, what can I get for my kids? We don't have anything. It's not about that. It's about who you're with and who you're celebrating. So that's a message that we need to remember during this Christmas. Amen. I totally agree with that. I can remember also when our kids were just so excited about participating in that idea of cutting out that tree, putting it on the wall, putting the ornaments on. And once again, it's about the importance of family. And this is a time when family gets together with the focus of Christ, our Lord and Savior. And he's the reason for every season in our lives and we need to remember that and I truly pray that this would be a season where you can celebrate Jesus Christ with your loved ones and your family.
You know, I'm keenly aware that some of you that are watching this live and some of you that are watching this on the rebroadcast are all at different places in your life. Some of you may be experiencing the mountaintop as well as some of you may be in the valley. Whether you're on the mountaintop or whether you're in the valley, I think the message from today is that Emmanuel, that God is with you. Before we close this broadcast, I want to pray for you because I the God that's on the mountain is the same God that's in the valley, and he is fully aware of your circumstances. You've heard some phenomenal testimonies today. We have an incredible congregation. We have an incredible staff, very diverse staff that comes from all different walks of life. But the one thing that we all have in common is we all serve the same God. And God meets us right where we're at, and he shows up and he shows off. So, Father, I pray for everyone that's watching this program and on this Christmas morning. Father, I declare and decree that, Father, all things are working together for their good. Whatever that situation is, God, that they need you to move on their behalf. Father, there's some that are on the mountaintop and they don't really see a pressing need. But, Father, Lord, you're still there. There are some, Father, Lord, that need you to show up in a big way even this day. And, God, you are there. So, Father, Lord, I just release the power of the Holy Spirit to come into every living room, every automobile, every workspace, wherever you're watching this at, and to hold you close during this Christmas season because the God that we serve is the God that's always with you. He's in you, and friends, I'm here to tell you today, He is for you. Well, on behalf of Lifeway Community Church, we want to wish you and your family a Merry Christmas. God bless you. Enjoy your day with your family.